Hello, world history students. This is Mrs. Politsky, and I have your notes for Chapter 30, Section 2, World War II. So when we talk about the Blitzkrieg, uh, this is a name that kind of was coined by the Germans for this idea of a lightning warfare, this idea that you move tr troops and equipment fast into your enemy's territory before they can really figure out what has happened. And the Germans really were able to accomplish a lot with this strategy. Matter of fact, you know, when we talk about the blitz and football, a lot of that is kind of coming from this. Uh, so nevertheless, the, the Germans were very effective with their war machine. Uh, with millions of soldiers and Soviet Red Army um, being unable to withstand the German Blitzkrieg because its troops were poorly trained and equipped. Uh, there was a rescue of Allied troops at a place called Dunkirk, and this marked the surrender of France to the Germans in the spring of 1940. Uh, sometimes this event is known as the miracle at Dunkirk uh, because uh, the fact that many British citizens were uh, asked by their government to take any kind of boats, like uh, fishing boats, yachts, you name it, and go to the French coastline to pick up these troops. Uh, and they did this out of the love for their country. And we saved uh, a large number of British troops and some of the, the French uh, forces at that time. Uh, after the troops were removed from Dunkirk, uh, Paris falls uh, within just a matter of days to the Nazis, and this is kind of like Hitler's sweet revenge for World War I and, and the whole Treaty of Versailles. So Hitler kind of really uh, ate this all up, to be quite honest. So before declaring war on Japan, the United States had helped the Allies by offering military aid to Great Britain in the forms of ships and military escorts for their convoys. And we were doing a lot of this uh, starting in uh, 1940 into 1941. Matter of fact, uh, in the sailing of some of these convoys, uh, the United States actually had to fire upon German U-boats before we even were involved uh, in the war. Matter of fact, uh, there was a ship known as the Reuben James, which was probably one of the first U.S. ships sunk by the Germans. Um, and this is well before we had actually gotten into the war. So in 1941, the U.S. established what is known as the Lend-Lease Act, uh, which allowed for the United States to supply Great Britain and, and that part of free France, including China and the Soviet Union, with the things that they needed, like food, oil, materials, and that would include things like warships, airplanes, uh, weaponry, all free of charge. But the deal was they could have this as long as they were able to um, borrow these or return them after the war. Uh, truth be it, not a lot of goods were returned after the war. Uh, matter of fact, a lot of the stuff that the United States was using in the European theater, it kind of got left behind. But needless to say, there is a, a little political cartoon here. If you take a look at the bottom of the screen, you'll note that that's uh, a cartoon, political cartoon drawn by Dr. Seuss, uh, kind of showing uh, maybe his position on this whole Lynn Lease Act. So Axis forces uh, wanted to take the city of Stalingrad. Just so you understand, um, in 1941, following that Nazi-Soviet non-aggression pact, uh, Germany decided that they couldn't trust the Soviet Union any longer, and they went ahead and invaded uh, the Soviet Union. And the goal was to go after Stalingrad because it was one of the larger cities in the Soviet Union. Uh, it was a major industrial center and it was also a center for shipping. And so, you know, if you can get them, you know, with their uh, logistics, uh, shut down their supplies, uh, shut down their food, all that, uh, the Nazis figured that they would have an advantage. Uh, in the end, the battle of Stalingrad resulted in the deaths of over 1 million Soviet soldiers. Uh, but the German forces eventually were forced to retreat to the West. Uh, kind of like Napoleon, Hitler kind of started his invasion at the wrong time. And eventually they're going to come across uh, the bad weather that even the, the French army uh, experienced back in the day. Control of North Africa 
uh, was another site where the Axis powers were moving into. Initially, Italy had tried to take over this area, but weren't able to maintain it. And so the Germans, the Nazis, came to North Africa. Uh, the Suez Canal was uh, obviously uh, something that the Nazis wanted to have control over, the fact that that would maybe cut off Great Britain from their petroleum. So needless to say, North Africa was important to the British in order to protect the Suez Canal, but also to keep that supply of Middle Eastern oil flowing. And thus, you're going to have a, a group of German troops known as the African Corps uh, that are going to set up shop here. When we talk about um, allied invasions, one of the first ones that you're going to see, it is actually in North Africa. And that starts basically in the late months of 1942. Uh, this is one that the United States participated in. And eventually it's it's going to wind up in, in Europe at some point in time. But after Italian forces based in Libya attacked Egypt, British forces drove the uh, drove into Libya and threatened to take control of all of North Africa. Germany then obviously had to get involved and they sent one of their best. They, they sent a man named General Erwin Rommel, or sometimes known as Field Marshal Rommel. Uh, he was uh, kind of a, a sneaky and cunning guy and he got a nickname known as the Desert Fox uh, because he loved using tanks and he actually was able to push the British out of Libya and, and force them back into Egypt and um, kind of maintain control for a while. But eventually, as um, more reinforcements come in for the Allies, it's going to be harder for Rommel to hang on to parts of North Africa. And eventually, we're going to have uh, some battles that are going to take place near the country of Tunisia. Probably the, the most remarkable, just kind of backtracking a little bit, battles that are happening in North Africa. Uh, the first one was uh, El Alamein, which was a battle that the French were able to, um, or not the French, the British were able to beat uh, the Nazis and drive them back into places like Tunisia. But um, U.S. troops came and participated in this, and they actually landed in Morocco in late 1942, I think it was like in December, and kind of pushed their way towards Tunisia. Uh, the British kind of pushed from Egypt towards Tunisia, and they really put the Nazis kind of in a vice. And eventually Rommel is going to beg Hitler to pull his troops. Hitler doesn't want to do it until the last minute. And a lot of those German troops were actually taken prisoner of war. Matter of fact, many of them were sent to the United States. Uh, and actually, some of them ended up in places like Nebraska in some of our uh, prisoner of war camps that we had here in the state. But uh, Rommel and Hitler are going to have a falling out. Matter of fact, uh, Rommel is going to be uh, complicit in supposedly an assassination attempt of Adolf Hitler and is going to be forced to. Um, basically take his life. If he didn't, he would have been publicly executed and bringing dishonor to his family. So thank you very much.